Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. God's presence is definitely in this house with us. And I just pray that as we tabernacle and as we worship, my God, that you will just open up your mind and your heart and just give him an opportunity to do what he has always wanted to do in your life and that he wants to restore. I get the sense that there will be restoration, my God, over the course of our service this morning. There are some things that he has placed on my heart that he wants to do. And I'm just tasked with the responsibility, the stewardship to the destination that he has given unto me. Amen. We're going to celebrate communion, but I'm going to take a different passage of scripture. Nonetheless, the essence of communion will be captured in that the Bible asks us when we do communion in that we examine ourselves. So we're not getting away from examining ourselves because we ought to examine communion before, my God, we partake of it. And I always preface communion by saying, if you are not saved, you partaking in communion is meaningless to you because you cannot identify with the broken body of Christ and his shed blood. That is, my God, the connection that we have as believer, because when we process what happened at Calvary, we realize that Jesus died so we can have the freedom that we have. So if you're not saved, I just ask that you will just reserve from taking communion at this point, but we are going to make it available at the end of service. I'll extend an invitation for you, my God, to give your life and your heart to the Lord. And if you decide to do so, not because of me, but because of the preach word, my God, the Bible says that it is the foolishness of preaching that wins and converts. So not that we stand and we, we, we preach foolishness, but to the unbeliever, what we do, it may seem foolish. Uh, we are going to, uh, we have two passages of scripture that we're going to read, John chapter, Joshua, rather, chapter number nine. But for communion this morning, we're going to go to John chapter number 13. This is all a part of what we're going to talk about and continue to talk about. We have been talking about guarding your heart. Uh, he had just placed it on my heart over the course of this week to talk about a mole. We know what a mole is. It's a person who is planted in an organization to get information and sell it to the highest bidder. We talked about this area in our lives, my God, that the guard that is there, the guard is compromised. And we went into a week of fasting and prayer. And I don't know about you, but I did receive revelation about areas of my heart that I need to, my life that I need to make sure, my God, it is protected and it is sealed. And I pray that as you fasted and prayed over the course of this week, the Lord would have pointed out to you areas of concern that he is concerned with so you can do something about it. Uh, John chapter number 13, let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we come before you, my God, and as you spread the table before me, God, let me be like the waiter that go around and serve everything, my God, that your people desire. I'm not afraid to strap an apron around my waist and to serve. That is what we have been called to do in the body of Christ is to serve. And so, God, as you put the apron around me, my God, and I take the trays and the drinks and I put it before your people, I pray, to God, that that which they partake of, my God, it will be like nothing they have tasted of before. And they will come and they will say, come, here is a place that you can feast and uh, the food is good, not because of me, but because the presence of the Lord is here. Father, I just ask that you will just watch, guide, protect, lead, direct, strengthen, and encourage us. God, we look to you and we say thank you in Jesus' name. John chapter number 13, uh, and we're going to, my God, we're going to go to John chapter number 13, and we are going to begin at verse 21. And it says, when Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in his spirit and testified, said, most assuredly, I say unto you, one of you will betray. Watch this. Then the disciples, they looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spake. Ah, now there was one leaning on Jesus's bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved, we know that to be John. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him and asked, is it, who is it of whom he speak? 
Then lean back on Jesus's breast and say, Lord, who is it? So notice John had a very close relationship with the Lord. They identify him as the disciple that Jesus loved. And then Jesus answered now in 26 and says, it is he that, it is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread, my God, when I have dipped. And having dipped the bread and give it to Jews, there's Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now, after the piece of bread, Satan entered into him and said unto him, what you do, do quickly. Jesus is sitting at the communion table. He's getting ready to leave planet Earth, and he's going back to his heavenly father, our heavenly father. His mission, his mandate here is completed. And so now this is, my God, as we would have rightfully called it, the last supper. So he's sitting with his disciple, and he gets the bread, and he breaks the bread, and he gave it to them. The table is spread, the wine is there, and he gave it to them, and he explained the symbolism of his broken, of the bread, which is his broken body. And the wine is symbolic of my God is blood that will be shed. And the beauty about the shed blood of Jesus is none of us can get an opportunity to say, well, the last drop that fell, it's because of me. Paul in the New Testament, he came and he says to us that before we, my God, partake of communion, we ought to examine ourselves. We had a week of fasting and prayer. This is what we do when we enter into a time of fasting and prayer. We examine ourselves with the word of God, in the presence of God, and whatever needs to be addressed, whatever areas of concerns are there, the Lord is going to speak to you. The Lord is going to allow you to experience conviction. And you see, conviction is a gift that we don't talk about. I know we talk about the fruit of the Spirit and all the other gifts in the body of Christ. Godly conviction is a gift because if I'm not on right standing with him and I go before him, the gift that I receive is divine revelation to say, Ian, these are areas of concerns in your life. You've got to do something about this, son, because if you come and I speak to you and you do absolutely nothing and you go back, guess what? It is insanity. What is insanity? Doing the same thing over and over, expecting the result to change. We have examined ourselves over the course of this week leading up to today's Sunday. And having an examined yourself, my God, in the presence of the Lord, with the word of the Lord, what revelation he has imparted unto you. The question is, what, if anything, have you done to begin to make sure that those areas of concerns are addressed and you're doing everything that he has asked you to do? Now we come, it is communion, and he said we ought to examine ourselves. We examine ourselves by asking ourselves the question, am I holding anyone captive in my heart? Do I hate anybody? Do I have animosity? Do I have any type of anger? Is there any unforgiveness in my heart as it relates to anybody? And now that we're asking these questions, you're going to find that you're going to internalize the question that is being asked. And if there is anybody, if there is any, well, uh, that is areas of concerns or individual that you need to make it right with. So before you partake of communion, if there is any hesitation in your spirit for you to move forward, now that God has pointed out, you need to make it right with John, Mary, Tom, or Sue. Leave communion where it is. Make it right. You can call me. We can do communion afterwards. I just want to make sure that I, God, we're in right standing with the Lord as it relates to what he asked us to do. Because Paul then goes on and says, if we do it incorrectly, we're causing condemnation in ourselves. Father, the songwriter says, I stretch my hands to thee, lifting up the bread and the wine. And I'm asking you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, have an examine ourselves in your presence with your word. God, with the freedom and the peace that you have given unto us. We're coming one step closer to you in that we're identifying with your broken body and your shed blood. And we thank you for this because it is what gives us the freedom, my God, to be able to, my God, just come boldly before you. We don't need a mediator anymore that we bring conditions, concern to a mediator and then a mediator speak on our behalf. We have direct access to you. And with this direct access, I can come with all my burdens, my cares and my concerns, my God, and I can just lay it at your feet, have a conversation about the confusion 
confusion, my God, that caused me, oh God, to be ineffective in the body of Christ. And I've been examined myself in your persons. And divine revelation say unto me, you're in good standing with me. Father, let us now partake of communion. And as we partake of communion, the areas in our lives where we are weak, my prayer, O oh God, is that these, my God, the bread and the wine, will cause us to be strong. Let these, O oh God, be a different communion that we celebrate, and that this, O oh God, will just strengthen us, fortify those weak areas of our lives. Spirit of the living God, we have set the table, and we are now going to partake of communion. We look to you and we say thank you in Jesus' name. You may serve communion to yourself. Your family is with you. You may serve your family communion. And after communion, we'll go to Joshua chapter number nine. We're going to continue on the pathway that he has set before us, my God, in that he is talking to us continuously about guarding our heart. Amen. Guard our heart. Guard our heart. This sermon will be a little bit different. We're going to still talk about guarding our heart, but there is just a little bit more that he wants to share with us as it relates to guarding our heart. You may partake of communion while you listen to me speak. Amen and amen. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. And this morning, we are going to continue, like I said, on that sermon series. We're going to go back to John chapter number 13, and we're going to talk about a mold. We'll explain what a mold is and the role they play and how they affect my God, organizations, and we're going to make sure that there is no mold, not mold as in uh, the thing that grows in our home and causes us to be sick, but the word M-O-L-E, amen, that's what we're going to look at this morning. I'm trying to get my system all set up here, but Joshua, chapter number nine is where we're going to go. Again, my subject this morning, it is simply this, guard your heart by classifying the request for access. Amen. We're going to guard our heart by classifying the requests for access. Not everybody should have access to your heart. Amen. Because if you look at the heart, again, it is the seed of our intellect. It is that place where we go to process information. It is the central intelligence system, if you will, of who we are as individuals. So we are going to guard that. Not everybody should have access. We're gonna talk about three uh, classification this morning. Number one, we're gonna talk about an associate. Number two, we're gonna talk about an acquaintance. And then number three, we're gonna talk about an ally. Joshua chapter number nine, Guard your heart by classifying each request for access. We're going to classify each interaction that we have. Again, three classification we're looking at. Number one, an associate. Number two, an acquaintance. And three, an ally. Joshua chapter number nine. Joshua chapter number nine will begin at verse one. And it says, and it came to pass when all the kings were on the side of the Jordan in the hills and in the lowland and in the coast of the great sea towards Lebanon, the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanite and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites heard about it. <laughs> Somebody is gonna hear about what God has done, is doing in your life. Watch this. That they gathered together to fight my God with Joshua and Israel in with one accord. Guard your heart. So notice, if you will, they come together 
to form an alliance with Joshua to fight a common enemy. But nonetheless, we have to be on guard to guard our heart. Amen. We've got to be on guard to guard our heart. And we classify them again, an associate, an acquaintance, or an ally. But watch this. But when the but when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done, my God, to Jericho at Ahai, they craftily, my they 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 worked rather craftily and went up to pretend, my God, to be ambassadors, and they took old sacks on their donkeys and wineskin and torn and mended. And I want to go back and just talk about briefly. Who or what an ambassador is? You see, the Bible puts it this way, that we are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador is a person who has, you know, legal, legal rights. So say, for example, I'm here in the U.S., and if I'm, an, uh, if, if I'm a U.S. ambassador to another country, the rights that I have here in the United States, when I travel to that country and I stay there, uh, I, I, I still have the same rights, even though. I'm in a foreign country. Paul puts it this way in that he said, we are ambassadors for Christ. And even though we are here and we are ambassadors, we have the rights, my God, extended to us. And that's a right that cannot be revoked, even though I'm in a foreign country. These men pretended to be something or someone that they're not. Guard your heart by the request. We're going to classify some individual. Therefore, my God, they will not have direct access to what was this. They, verse 4 again, they, cra they work craftily and they went up and uh, pretended to be the ambassadors, watch this, and they took old sacks on their donkeys, old wineskin torn and mended, old and patched sandals on their feet, and old garments on themselves, and all the bread of their provision was dirty and moldy, watch this, and when, uh, and they went rather to Joshua up to the camp of Gilgal and said unto him uh, and the men of Israel, we have come from a far country, now therefore make a covenant with us. No, we're not going to make any type of covenant because a covenant is a binding agreement and uh, there is no way I'm going to meet you today and by any chance, by any slight chance, I'm going to make a binding agreement with you that is irrevocable. No, it's not going to happen. I need to get to know and I need to understand who you are before that type of request is granted. You don't need somebody today, mom, and you grant them that type of request into your home or even remotely close to your heart. I've got to get to see you and how you operate and how you function before I begin to, my God, form any type of friendship with you. So the request came in that they said six again, and they went to Joshua ah, at the camp of Gilgal, and they said unto him and to the men of Israel, we have come from a far country. Now therefore make a covenant with us and watch this. Then the men of Israel said to the Hivites, perhaps you dwell among us. So how can we make a covenant with you? And I like the hesitation or ah, the fact that they question it. And this is what we ought to do as children of God. Because again, you have to guard your heart, guard your heart. That is where God made deposits. That is where your visions, your dreams, your aspiration, my God, they are all nestled in your heart. So if I don't guard my heart, my God, there are things that will come and they will not complete, my God me uh, 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 fulfilling the assignment that God has given, but they're going to come and they're going to compete. And there's a big difference with something that completes or complements you from something that comes and compete because when you're in competition with something or someone, the objective is for them to win and they're going to do just about anything to make sure that you are, de you are defeated. Guard your heart by being inquisitive and asking some of the question. I'll read something again. Then the, the man of Israel said to the Hivites, perhaps you dwell amongst us. So how can we make a covenant with you? But they said to Joshua, we are your servant. And Joshua said unto them, who are you and 
clear do cause harm. Who are you and where do you come from? Guard your heart. Guard your heart by classifying the request, my God, that comes your way. Don't just be open, my God, to open up your heart and let anybody in. You will not understand their motives until, my God, you begin to see them. We're going to talk about this a little bit longer. My God, you won't understand them until you begin to see them, my God, for who they really are, because they can pretend. Ah, Bob Marley put it this way. You can fool some of the people some of the time but you will not be able to fool all the people all the time. Verse eight, it says, but Joshua said, we are your servant. And Joshua said to them, who are you and where do you come from? And they said, from a very far country, your servants have come because of the name of the Lord your God, for we have heard of his fame and all that he did in Egypt. Watch this. Watch the words that they speak. Watch the words. Watch the words. Watch the words. Watch the words. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Watch the words. And not only watch the words, you've got to watch the action. Watch the action, not only just the words, but you've got to watch the actions. My God, watch the actions, words, words. Words can be spoken to entice and to uh, make a person look, my God, other than what they are, but you've got to watch the action. Ah, verse nine. So they said to him from afar, country your servants have come because of the name of the lord your god and we have heard of his fame and all that he had did verse 10 and all that he did my god to the two kings of the amorites who were beyond the jordan to shinar king of heshbon and Og, the king of bashan who were at ashtarot therefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us saying Take provision with you for the journey, my God. And when you meet them, say unto them, we are your servant. Therefore, make a covenant with us. No, 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 no. You've got to be, my God, the bells ought to be going off in your mind about an individual who you just meet, and they want prominent positions in your life. The bells and the whistles ought to be going off. If you just meet an individual and they come and they are placing demand as to where they want to be in your life, we're going to classify them so you know them. And because we classify them and we begin to know them, it is going to take time before you get to that place where you come that close. Watch this. Therefore, the elders and all the inhabitants of the country, of, of the country spake to us saying, take provision with you and journey uh, and, and, and meet with them. And when you meet with them, watch the words and look at the request that they're asking for. They're asking for a covenant. A covenant, it's an unbreakable agreement. It's an agreement that cannot be broken. Verse 12, this bread of ours, we took for our provision from our house, my God, on the day we departed to come to you. But now look, it is dry and it is moldy. And these wineskin, which we filled with new wine, see, it is torn, my God, and these garments and our sandals have become old and because of the very long journey. Watch this. Then the men of Israel took some of their provision. God, help us this morning. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Then the men of Israel took some of their provision, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. The scripture says to you and I, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You've got to be careful of the environment and individuals who we interact with. When they come and the request is, let me know this about you. And it, it is critical information. We don't share critical information with just about anybody. We don't. 
if I just meet you and you want to know just about everything about me, that is reason for me to get up and to leave your presence. The Bible said that. Let me read 14 again. Then the men of Israel took some of their provision, but they did not seek counsel of the Lord. And watch this. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them and let them live, my God. And the rulers of the congregation swore by it. So they make a covenant that was irreversible. Watch this. Watch this. Taking my time this morning. Verse 16. And it happened, my God, at the end of three days, after they had made a covenant with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors who dwelt near to them. Oh, Father, we see ourselves in the text in that we are quick, my God, to open up ourselves and to allow individual or individuals to be a part of our lives. But this morning, God, you said you want us to guard our heart and you're going to teach us how to classify individuals. And by you teaching us how to classify individuals, let this be in the forefront of our mind, in our interaction with everything and everyone. Father, we look to you this morning and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Why do I need to guard my heart? Because again, when God imparts unto us dreams, visions, aspirations, and what a better tomorrow looks like, those divine revelation, they are deposited in our heart. He speaks unto us. We go to him in fasting and in prayer. And he begin to impart divine revelation unto us as it relates to what our tomorrow looks like, what our today is going to be. And it is these deposits that God impart unto us that are important and they're vital. And we don't share this with just about any and everybody. Because like I said, there are individuals who would want to see you down on your face. They don't think that, my God, you should be the person to live this particular life or live that particular life. But you see, I've got to remember that everything that God creates, he does two things with his creation. Number one, he gives it a name. And number two, there's an assigned purpose that he gives unto the thing that he creates. God has fashioned and formed you and I, and he has given us a name and there's an assigned purpose. And sometimes the purpose that God has given unto you and to me, individuals look at us based on our culture, custom, our orientation, where we're from, the background, where we live, my God. And they believe that no person or persons from that particular area should, my God, have this type of opportunity. But we have come to know that God is no respecter of person. What he said he's going to do and what he does, he does it. And there is absolutely nobody can change that. The thing that I love about God is that ah, the Bible said that when he opens up a door, no man can close it. And when he shuts a door, no man can open it. So when God begins to make and to impart deposits in your heart as it relates to who you are. Those are the things that we use, my God, to strengthen ourselves. So for example, when times become tough and it becomes difficult and it becomes hard and the enemy comes and he's trying to convince you to do something, my God, other than what God has called and imparted onto you that this is who you are. We guard our heart by using, my God, divine revelation that God imparts onto you, telling you 
that you're this. So when the enemy comes and begin to tell you that you're something other than what God declares to you about you, you've got to take a draconian stand in that you stand up and have enough, done everything to stand. You begin to say to the devil, this is what God declares about me. So that which you have to say, I am not going to, my God, allow it to get to here to where it makes its way here. Guard our hearts. Israel is in transition. And I want to say to somebody this morning, my God, when you find yourself in transition, it can be a very vulnerable place. Why? Because there are so many different moving parts, my God, that you have to, my God, make sure that you nail down and you've got to make sure everything move in sync. And you've got to make sure that everyone who's positioned to do something when you're in transition, everybody is on the same page and you're not moving to a different, my God, rhythm. If you speak, you're moving based on divine revelation that God has imparted unto us. Israel is in transition. Moses, God's servant, is dead. God spoke to Joshua in my God, Joshua chapter number one, and he says to him that Moses, my servant, is dead. But because Moses is dead, it doesn't mean that the mission, the mandate, my God, for Israel to transition into, my God, the promised land, it doesn't mean that it changed. Guard your heart by classifying the request for access to who you are. My God, Moses is dead. The responsibility now is transferred or transitioned into the hand of Joshua. Joshua at some point would have seen where Moses, having made mistake in his leadership, Moses got to a place, good God, I feel the presence of God this morning, where Moses stood up and he said to the Lord, God, if you don't go with me, I'm not going to go guard your heart by taking a stand and making sure that it is the presence of God that goes before you, before you, my God, make and grant any access before you form any type of alliance. You make sure you filter the request through God. They're in transition and there is a common enemy that they have to fight. And when you read the first part of Joshua chapter number nine, it named, my God, all the uh, different uh, people who come and they form the alliance. And in the process of all of that, again, when you're in transition, it's a very nebulous place. It is a place where if everything is not, my God, nailed down there, opportunity, my God, for the enemy or, or, or someone who's looking to take advantage or to, uh, 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 to sneak their way in, there are these opportunities when you're in transition. Guard your heart. Couldn't help but to sit and think <laughs> of one of the things that my 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 sister and I we love to do we love to watch all of these action movies and we love watching these action movies especially where uh, you know there are the CIA operatives or persons trying to you know uh, 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 do all different type of thing whether it's you know they they they're trying to rob places that are secure and they come up with all of these different great ideas in order to penetrate the security. One of our favorite movies to watch, it's Mission Impossible, because as the name state, the mission is impossible, but nonetheless, they look for opportunities or vulnerability within an organization in order to get there, to get either valuable things that are uh, behind so many different layers of security, and they come up with all of these ingenious ideas in order to overcome, my God, what they put in place, which they might call an ironclad security system. But nonetheless, it is the genius of these individuals to look for opportunity. And the windows that they look for, they're small windows. But my God, they do their calculation. And then based on their calculation, they execute. So everybody who's a part of the team, everybody has a role to play in it to ensure the success of the mission. Guard your heart. And when you look at what is depicted in a movie, you think about your gift and your talent, my God, that is in your heart. I'm going to get to the classification in a moment. I just got happy and excited here. So just be with me. When you think about what is depicted in the movie 
and you think about your heart and you think about the small area or areas of vulnerability that the enemy sees and he comes and he set up and he execute a plan in order to get behind all the defenses that you have put up. You now got to realize and understand, my God, we talked about this last week and the week before in that, my God, there are these five areas, my God, that uh, are, 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 are vulnerable in that it is our five senses. So again, when we look at the areas of vulnerability, my God, it is the sense of touch. It is the sense of taste, smell, what we look at and what we hear. So if those areas, my God, are vulnerable. These are the windows or the opportunity that the enemy looks for, my God, in order to uh, 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 bring us down, if you will. These organizations that are established, oftentimes you will find, my God, that there are persons on the inside who uh, are planted there and they call them a mole. And the mole, my God, is integrated into the, the heart of an organization and the mission and the mandate of the mole is to gain access to critical information so the mole can now share that information with persons or individual or another organization or another country on the outside in an effort, my God, to tear down, my God, this uh, organization or this business from the inside out. And that's the conversation that I want to have with us this morning. A mold that is planted on the inside, my God. And you see the thing about the mold that is planted, I'll give you some definition in a minute. The thing about the mold that is planted, we kind of talked about it, my God, last week when we talked about, my God, the, 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 the farmer that went out to farm and he planted the good seed, but when he looked, there was wheat sown with tears. And then the question was, what do we do at this point? And the farmer said, leave them, let them grow together. Because at the time of harvest, my God, we're going to separate and we are going to burn. The thing about the mold that is planted in an organization, it is difficult for you to, my God, just look at the actions and the activity of the mold that is planted in an organization to distinguish that really and truly that is the mold. What does, my God, an organization do when they realize that the integrity of who they are, their name, my God, is subject to, my God, being torn down? They shut everything down. Everything is shut down and everybody is treated as a suspect until proven differently. I feel God this morning. What do you do? My God, when you feel that the integrity of your walk and your relationship with the Lord is compromised, what do you do? Do you just stop everything and go into a time of fasting and prayer? My God, for every area of your life to be under examination and scrutiny until the Lord point out to you, Monica, this is the area, my God, that you need to address. And your mission, good God, should you choose to accept it, is to bring that area and to surrender that area area to me so I can work it out and I can fix it. What do you mean? It's kind of like what we read about, my God, in, in Jeremiah chapter number 18. My God, just permit me to preach to you. I'll teach to you in a minute. When we read Jeremiah chapter number 18, it talks about ah, Jeremiah going down to the potter's house. And when he went down to the potter's house, he said there was a work that was being worked on wheel, but there was something, there was an issue. There was an issue. There was an issue with the clay that the potter put on the potter's wheel. The Bible puts it this way in that the clay was marred and because the clay was marred, it could not fashion and form, my God, the intended uh, item, the, the, the image, the, 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 the end product that the potter had in his mind could not fashion and form that. Why? Because the clay was marred. And when the clay is marred, it means that somebody overlooked a step or a process. And when a step or a process is overlooked, and when you continue to fashion and form, you're going to have a bigger problem in the end. Why? Because again, when the clay is harvested from the clay pit, the experienced hand of the potter know that the clay needs to sit for a while. And when the clay sits for a while, the next thing experience does is to get a mantle and begins to hammer 
the clay. Why? Because of its very nature, clay, the consistency of clay is that it has these air pockets in it. And if you take the clay from the clay pit and put it on the potter's wheel and fashion and form any vessel, when you put it in the fire for it to cure, those air pockets are not beaten out of it. And because they're not beaten out of it, hence the vulnerability and hence the opportunity for the enemy, my God. God to get uh, at you because of those ear pockets that are not beaten out. And when the clay goes into the oven and the oven is fired up and it is cured and you take it out. If you were to, my God, just bear with me for one more moment here. I feel the presence of God. If you were to uh, if you were to fashion the vessel and if you decide that you are going to, my God, now use it if you will. Oh, hold this on me, sir. If you decide that you're going to hold this, I'm gonna I'm, I'm get to Joshua 9 in a moment. I just need you to see this so you understand, my God, what the Lord is saying to you. And I want you to just pour it in here. So we're gonna bring this on camera. Go ahead and pour it in from the top, from the top, pour it up here. So say this is you and you have not been very careful to guard your heart, and your desire is, God, fill me with your love and your presence and everything. Look at what's happening. The background, you can't, let me, all right, let me, go ahead, pour it. Look at what's happening. Let's start pour it. Look at this. So because you're not careful, friends, because you are not careful to guard your heart, and there is that area of vulnerability, every time God begins to pour into you, your frustration begins to build. Why? Because you can never get pass that hole that you never took the time to address. Look at this. You have the capacity to hold this much, but because you were not diligent to guard your heart, every time he pours into you, unfortunately, this is how much you can hold. And when you look at what is here, this is the frustration because this hole had it been beaten out, my God, when the potter took the time to fashion in the form, you would now have the capacity to hold what God wants you to hold. I'm taking my time this way. Guard your heart by classifying the requests. The children of Israel, they are in transition. I don't know who that was for, but I just get the sense that somebody needed to hear that they are in transition. And these group of individuals, they come and they said that we have traveled a very far, far, far country. Why? Because we heard of what God has done amongst you. Let me read the def definition for a mold. And, and, and I'm trying not to get ahead of myself here. It says here, a mold. A mold, and I just put it in my own words according to other definition that it is in the dictionary. A mold is a destiny killer. Until the organization shuts down the entire operation and three, let me, let me, sorry, let me go back here. A mold, a mold. Ah, just bear with me here. A mold, a mold. Ah, getting excited here. Bear with me here. Let me find the definition and I'll just read it to you here. I was just putting this in my own word until this pop up for me. So just bear with me for one more minute. Come on. Ah, blessed be your name this morning. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name this morning. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. A mold 
is a member of a government or an organization who gives secret information to the press, my God, or my God, a rival organization. So think about this, a mole, a person that is planted in an, in an organization, and that person is planted, and again, their role is to harvest as much information about the organization and to feed it, my God, to another competitor who is trying to tear down or to destroy that company. A mole is a destiny killer. Until an organization shut down the entire operation and treat everyone as a suspect, implementing a check and balance to oversee the daily operation and place everyone on a need-to-know basis and question all requests for action then that organization is subjected to, my God, the information that is shared. So again, when a person comes, you think about the places that we work. And if I were to start working at that organization and I walk in and I go to, my God, HR or any other place, my manager, and I begin to demand certain requests or certain access to information, critical information, the bells and the whistles are to begin to go off. Because again, there are access that are there, but it's reserved for certain individual. And we have to think about our lives like this. Think about individuals that we just meet and we just meet those individuals and they come up to us and they're asking us to share critical information with them. Everybody who comes, we need to put them on a need to know basis. So when the question is asked, you need to say to them, you are on a need to know basis and you don't need to know that right now because I don't know you enough to be able to share that with you, the classification. We classify them three ways. And I'll use three description in order to help you to, under, to classify these individuals. Number one, an acquaintance. Who or what is an acquaintance? The acquaintance, I'll put it to you this way. The acquaintance is like the mailman that comes to your house. The mailman comes and my conversation with my mailman, it takes place at my front door. The door is ajar. The mailman does not get to come into my house because I don't know you like that. I'm going to have a front door conversation with you, Mr. Mailman. We exchange, you bring my mail to me. We exchange pleasantry. How are you doing good? How's the kids? How is the wife? Good. That's the type of conversation that I have with an acquaintance. An associate, it's a little bit different. This is a person who I've interacted with over a period of time. And because I've interacted with you over a period of time, I share bits and pieces of information about who I am. And I look at what you do with the information. If it is that I share with, with you, my God, you don't get to move from the classification of an acquaintance to an associate. So the information that I share with you if it does not become information that is shared around town, then you get to come into my home. However, there are still limitations and boundaries that are established around the associate. The associate gets to come into my house, but you are limited only to my living room. So again, we have the acquaintance which is like the mailman. I have conversation with you at my front door. My front door is a job. The associate is a person who, my God, you, you know over a period of time, you share snippets of your life with the individual and the things that you share, you don't really hear it back, my God, out there. An ally, it's the person that not only get to come into your home, but this is the person, my God, that you take and you can sit in your bedroom. That person can sit on your bed and you open up and you begin to share, my God, issues that you will never share with anybody. 
guard your heart by how you classify the individual who come requesting or demanding certain things from you. Because again, if I don't know you, I'm not going to share critical information. And again, a mole, it's a person who is planted to harvest information in order to destroy or to tear you down. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Like an organization, question my God, actions and the attitude and the intent of individual who comes and they're asking for critical information to be my God, relate to them. If there's an area of your life that is left open or unguarded or compromised as a result of that, when a mole is planted, we're going to talk about a mole in a minute. When a mole is planted in your life, they're going to pretend to be my God and ally. They are there. And what a mole tend to do, they, 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 they are inquisitive and they ask the question, tell me more about that. Why are we doing that? Why is it important for me to do that? Allison, why do you do that? Allison, Tell me about your background. Monica, tell me about this person. Tell me about your husband. Tell me about this. If I don't know you, no. You have raised, my God, my suspicion. And I'm not going to share that with you. The children of Israel, they saw these men that came and they pretended to be something that they're not. And my God, they execute a plan that was flawless. But the Bible said that they did not ask the Lord. They did not inquire about the Lord before they formed an alliance and they gave an associate. They gave rather an acquaintance, my God, the position position of an ally. And this is my God where it becomes detrimental to us. Why? Because a person may present themselves well and they want to position themselves to be an ally. But an ally is not a person who just gets to be an ally. An ally over a period of time demonstrate that you can trust them. And not only do they demonstrate that you can trust them, when persons are out there saying stuff about you, an ally stand up and defend you. The acquaintance and the associate will not do that, but an ally, an ally is proven in the trenches. An ally is proven when you are not even there. An ally will stand and defend your integrity. An ally will stand and fight for you. Why? Because an ally sees and know and understand who you are. An ally is not with you because of what they can get from you. An ally is there because they compliment you. And now I is not there to harvest any information and to share it. In fact, an ally, my God, knows more. They, 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 they know some of the most secret things about you. And when you sit there and you worry and you think that they would share it, you question, you look, my God, and persons come back to you saying, I've asked this and I've asked that. And the person sit there and they say absolutely nothing. Guard your heart by the request, by the access that you grant, my God, in your life. Ah, John 10, 10 through 16 says that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when we have areas in our lives that are not guarded, the enemy knows what those areas are. My God, they realize that the children of Israel were not guarding this particular area. And so because they saw it, they decide this is the area that we can exploit and we can put this plan together. We can pretend to be, we can present ourselves to be something that we're not. And hopefully this work. And again, when we deviate from what God set in motion for us in that in all our ways acknowledge him and he is going to direct our path the bible said it twice in john chapter in joshua chapter number nine that the children of israel did not ask the lord they did not they did not they did not they took it upon themselves my god to extend an invitation to somebody that should have been treated as an acquaintance and as an acquaintance you're going to be around me but it's going to take time before i begin to share any type of information about me to you. You think about the computers and the phones that we have. We have critical information that is on them. And we make sure that they're antivirus on them. Why? Because, my God, if we don't have those, the information, my God, 
that is on them. My God, they are they, 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 they are subject to the highest bidder. I'm going to share my experience as I fasted and pray. Oh, uh, God, help us this morning. Talk about antivirus. Thursday, I receive a phone call from my credit union. And the message came in late. And I couldn't respond back to them because they were close for business. This Friday, I got paid, went to purchase my lunch. And when I went and I took out my debit card, and when I slide it, the lady said to me, sir, your card is declined. I'm saying to myself, what do you mean my card is declined? Uh, and I had another card and I paid for it. And immediately I called the credit union and I said, I went to go, you know, use my card, but my card is declined. And prior to that, I listened to the message and it is it, it was just a generic message. I said, please call us. This has to do with your debit card. But when I called the credit union, they said to me that, my God, somebody got access to my car. And what they did, they shut everything down. If we don't hear anything, this is something that we need to hear as it relates to the mold. We shut everything down and everything and everyone is treated out as a suspect until proven otherwise. So when I called them, they said, yes, somebody got access to your card. And there were activities, my God, that we saw uh, purchases that were being made that was, that was uncharacteristic of you. You see, an ally know who you are. So an ally, when things are being said about God, I feel you this morning. You see, an ally, when persons begin to say something that's on characteristics of you, an ally would shut it down and say, that is not the person that I know. You see, an ally is not going to sit there and encourage those type of conversation. An ally shuts it down. So my credit card company, they just shut everything down. And when I call them and they explain what was going on, they explain and they said, we're going to send you out a new card, pin and everything has been changed. So this is something that we've got to learn and we've got to understand it as it relates to an ally and us classifying individuals in our life, acquaintance, associate, and an ally. So they shut it down. And when they shut it down, I begin to write this part of the, 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 the message. So my point number one, and I'll probably just get through to this, is just a fail safe or an antivirus. We have to live our lives like that where we look at the request. So had they look at the request, again, we talked about this last week or the week before, when I lived in Massachusetts, the home that I had, there were all of these different, my God, security system <laughs> envelopes. There were established parameters that were set based on the things that I put around my home. For example, if you were to walk up to my home, there were parameters set within a certain radius. And if you breach the radius, the lights will come off, come on, and all of these sirens begin to ring. What do we do in our lives, my God, when individuals come to us as they did in Joshua chapter number nine? Do we have any type of fail safe? Do we have any type of established parameter that we have built around our lives, my God, where the bells and the whistles begin to go off before access is granted to anybody feel safe and the antivirus how many how many of us would purchase a computer today my god and take it home and make sure that we do not install an antivirus on our computer or on our phone and just plug it onto the internet and you begin to access banking information investment information how many of us would do that none of us so as it relates to the critical deposit that God has made in our heart, guard your heart. Why is it that we then allow anyone or anything to gain access to the critical information that is here? Sensitive information like your social security number, your date of birth, and other indicative data. My God, they can use this to ruin your life. Cards can be opened. Purchases can be made. They can steal your account information. I share what happened, my God, on last Thursday. When I called the bank and I explain, my God, that they saw purchases that was uncharacteristic of my spending habit. In addition to that, there were purchases that were made from other states within minute apart. And they realized that I cannot be at two places at the same time. And so as a result of that, they did the next best thing, which was to shut this thing down. 
if a bank or an organization can implement a number of safety measures to preserve the integrity of its data and its customer, how much more should we as believers set in motion, my God, or to make sure there is a check and balance and there is a multi-layer fail-safe protection system, my God, in place that limits or deny access until, my God, all the requests are filtered through the Lord. If banks and organizations can, my God, take and make sure that those things are, those safety measures are in place. Why is it that as believers, we don't have those type of fail safety measure in place as it relates to individual or request that comes to us? My God, not realizing that persons can pretend to be something that they're not. But again, if we filter, if, 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 if in all your ways you acknowledge me and I'm going to direct your path, when the requests come, my God, for these Gibeonites to join with you, if you take the time and ask the Lord, should I allow them, my God, to be a part of ah, what we are doing here? He will let you know, no, so you don't, number one, go and you make a covenant, which is an irrevocable, a covenant, it's a, an agreement that is binding and it cannot be broken. So you're locked into, my God, something with an enemy. And the thing about this, my God, is because of the covenant that they have made with the Gibeonites, God really and truly cannot destroy them. How many of us have formed covenants with individuals, my God, that should not be a part of our life, but they should have been destroyed by the Lord. It's kind of like what God says, my God, to the children of Israel when he spoke to King Saul and he said, kill the Amalekite, get rid of every single one of them, but Saul decided that he wasn't going to do it. How much more, my God, does God have to do in order to help us to understand that he wants a relationship with us and we mean more to him than anything in the world and he just simply want us to run everything by him before we set anything in motion in our life. Guard your heart and question the access that is being asked of you. Guard your heart. And if you have these parameters that are established around your heart, you will find that, my God, you will begin to filter it and you will begin to see individuals for who they are. Proverbs 3 and 6, again, it says, in all thy ways acknowledge me and we will, my God, he will direct your path. Know that we have concluded a week of fasting, asking the Lord to reveal to us any area or areas of compromise, open access that the enemy may have in our lives. Have you asked him to reinforce or to fortify that area of your life? or those areas of your life. Why? So you can resist the enemy and watch him flee. Or the question is, have you chosen to do absolutely nothing about it? What have you done with the divine revelation that God has imparted onto us over the course of this week? I have gotten mine. And I realize that, my God, Ian, what the Bible says is really and truly true. Be, be careful when you think that you're standing. My God, there are things that is happening in and around your life. But could it be, my God, that I became distracted and I'm looking at everything besides looking to the Lord? And as a result of that, these areas in my life that should have been guarded, my God, I drop my guard. I lower my God, the security measure, if you will. And the enemy saw it as an opportunity and he began to come close. But again, now that the Lord sees that here comes the bells and the whistles that begin to go off in fasting and prayer. Guard your heart. Consider, my God, the sensitive and critical information, my God, that is on the framework of a bank's hard drive. Consider the sensitive, critical ah, insight, divine revelation that the Lord share with you on a daily basis. Consider your heart, my God, as that computer mainframe. Consider your dreams, your vision, your aspiration, your conversation, my God, you have with the Lord about tomorrow. And then, my God, now he is telling you, my God, that you have got to be very careful who you share this with. Access to your heart should not be granted, my God. My, let me read that again. Access to your heart should only be granted to your destiny helper, God revealed to you. My God, a destiny killer should never, 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 never have any insight or any access to any sheer gold dreams or vision that the Lord reveals to you.
Guard your heart. My God, we're going to classify them. We're going to get to know them. And again, a person should never come to you today looking to get, my God, close to you and you open yourself up. Why? Because in Matthew chapter number 7, 16 through 20, this is what the Bible says. It says that you should know them by their fruits. You shall know them by their fruits. Preacher, what do you mean by that? And if we're going to know them by their fruits, I want you to write this down. Write this down. I was happy and excited when the Lord, my God, impart this unto me. Know them by their fruits. And when I begin to probe and when I became inquisitive and I say, Lord, what do you mean by this? Watch this. And if we know them by their fruits, and if there are four seasons in a year, as a believer, we should practice waiting a year before sharing any critical information with anybody. Know them by their fruits. Because if you meet them at this stage of your life, and it is not harvest time in their life, you will not see the fruit that they bear. So you've got to take a step back and we are not drawn, and we are not, my God, we 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 are not we 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 are not immersed into the beauty of the buds and ah, the aesthetics of the tree. No, we want to see the fruit that you bear before we number one partake or allow you, my God, to come and to be a part of our circle. We have got to practice waiting, waiting. I don't know who you are to begin to share that with you. I need to see, I need to understand your history and what you have done in time past before I begin to share any information. Guard your heart. The Bible said that we're going to know them by their fruits. Again, there are four seasons to the year. And if I meet you, and this is the season, it is in the winter time now, and guess what? The trees are beginning to shed their leaves, and I don't see any fruit. So, my God, you, ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. And maybe this is what these men did. Maybe they were in the winter season of their life in that they shed everything, and Joshua could not see the fruits, my God, that is in their hearts and in their mind that they have used deception is the fruit that they bear. And Joshua could not see it. One interaction should not uh, allow you to get excited and happy about opening up your heart and your life and your home to just about anybody. Because again, if you give the mailman access to your home, the mailman is responsible to take your mail and he takes the mail and he delivers it to you. Watch this. The mailman, if the mailman decide to open up your mail, my God, they will get in trouble and they will lose their job and go to prison. So even though the mailman has critical information for you, they can't access it. But you have to open up your life for the mailman to gain access to your life, your home, and for you to share that information. Guard your heart. God is simply saying to us through the text, wait Wait, 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 wait. Don't be, my God, so ah, quick to open up your life and share parts of your life with individuals who you really and truly don't know and understand their character. Israel made a rash decision to open up their lives and begin to share. Again, I'm going to read this again for somebody. St. Matthew chapter number 7, 16 through 20. It says, my God, we will know them by their fruit. And if we will know them by their fruits, my God, and if there are four seasons, my God, in a year as a believer, we should practice waiting a year before we share, before we begin to share any critical information with anybody. Why? Because again, I may meet you in, my God, your pruning season, and you may look like you can be trusted. And I want to say to somebody this morning, pump the brakes. Harvest time is the great revealer. Harvest time in the great reveal. Don't be shocked when the tree reveals to you the fruit it bears. Have you ever just <laughs> have the type of, I, 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 I'm going to call it revelation, where you thought an individual was this, and my God, you begin to see them for who they are? 
And is it of such that you take a step back and you're saying, I can't believe. No, they were showing you all along who and what they are. But you just choose not to accept it. Let me close with these two examples. Think about Solomon, not Solomon, Samson, if you will. Think about Samson. God, again, create, call, fashion him to be a deliverer. God imparted unto him, my God, ah, the secret of his success. Don't cut your hair. Don't drink anything strong. And don't touch anything that is dead. Guard your heart. Samson, when he followed the instruction of the Lord, he was successful. Why? Because he's guarding the thing that God tell him to guard. Ah, he made the connection ah, with Delilah. And we know the story. She began to, ah, begin to probe. Tell me where your strength lies. Tell me where your strength lies. Look at this. One occasion, Samson said, if you bound me with wits that are cut from the tree, then I would lose my strength. God help somebody this morning. And I would be like any normal man. Samson went to bed. And the thing that he told her, she did. And then, my God, the words in the scripture said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And the Bible said that Samson got up and he broke the wicks. And he defeated the men that were trying to get at him. The Bible said that there are these waves. God help me this morning. Watch the waves, the waves and the pressure that somebody is putting on you to share critical information about who you are. There are these waves, there are these different instances that she, my God, came and she pressured and there are these waves and there are these waves and she is relentless in her pursuit. Samson began to lower, my God, the security level until he lay his head in her lap, and he shared his most inner secret. And when he shared his most inner secret, my God. But you see, the thing is, before I get there, what do we do when we share this much with an acquaintance? And the thing that we share with an acquaintance, we see that they put it to the test or they put it in motion, but the associate or the acquaintance is looking to be or to have the position of an ally. What do you do when you share this much and you see that they put it to the test to try and bring you down? What then make you want to share other critical information? Samson laid in her lap and he shared his most inner secret with her. Remember we talk about the mole? You see, the mole, when a mole is integrated into an organization, the mole, my God, is more outspoken and the mold is more defiant. The mold is more, the mold shows more care and concern for the organization than anybody else. The mold is liable to read the why and company policy and begin to point out if this person does this or that. That's the voice, the, the voice of the mold, if you get nothing else. It has an authoritative voice and it seemed to present itself to be the one defending, my God, the real integrity of the company. And this is how the mold build trust. This is how Delilah built trust in Samson. She was a mold. She was planted. And she begins to harvest information in order to tear him down. And the information that she harvested, she would share it with the Philistine. The Philistine would try the thing that she say. And when, my God, they felt that the success was minimal, they begin to press the mold and say, we need more. You got to go deeper. You got to go, my God, where? We need to find out where, wow, how we can tear him down. And the Bible said that when she had the last conversation, she wept bitterly for days. 
she wept bitterly for days and she began to say to him stuff like, you don't love me and if you care about me, you would really and truly share this. And you see, this is the action and the activity of the acquaintance and the associates when they begin to apply waves of pressure in order to break down the walls of defense that you have put up. And if you're not strong enough in the moment to begin to take a step back again, everyone and everything is treated as a suspect until proven differently. Why are you in such a hole to hear and to gain this information about who I am? Why? Why is it so important that I share my innermost secret with you? Why? Why? What is your purpose? What is the intent of you wanting to know my innermost secret? Samson, overlook, asking God, inquiring of God, having a conversation with the boy as it relates to the request that now comes before him. We know the story. He lost his strength. And because he was not guarding what was here, he lost his sight and a relationship was broken, his relationship with the Lord was broken. But I wanna close with this word covenant and help you to understand the importance of a covenant and who you form a covenant with. Because a covenant, it's an unbroken, it's not breakable by anything. Samson lost his sight, he lost his strength. And he was now the mockery of the Philistine. Place in a position where he's walking around and grinding corn at the mill. Why? Because he was not careful to question the access that was requested to the critical information. But watch this. The Bible said that uh, his hair begins to grow back, which was a sign of the covenant. And when his hair begins to grow back, he begins to feel the strength. This is the critical piece in all of this. Because again, Joshua formed a covenant with these persons that they shouldn't have formed a covenant with. Therefore, God could not execute the judgment that he wanted to execute. Samson made a covenant. God made a covenant with Samson. The sign of the covenant began to go back. Samson received his strength and he went and he accomplished his mission. These men that tricked the children of Israel, yes, they were enslaved, but the issue is the covenant that should have never been formed. Why? Because oftentimes you read where, 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 where groups treated the children of Israel indifferently. And God said, I want to wipe them out and purge this behavior from the land. But because of the covenant that was formed with them, they, God could not wipe them out. He had to honor the covenant. So when we don't guard our heart based on, my God, divine revelation and the thing that God gives us, we form alliance and we make individuals ally that should be treated as acquaintance. And when they're acquaintance, God can deal with them because they're out there, they're not really close to us. Guard your heart by the access that you grant to individuals. Guard your heart by the access you grant to individuals. Again, if a person comes to you and they're looking to get immediate access to you, your history, your life, the bells and the whistles ought to be going off. And you ought to be putting up ah, your arms to say, S slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Because I need to know you and the only way I'm going to get to know you, it is by the fruits that you bear. So guess what? It's going to take about a year from this time before I begin to share anything with you because I do not know you. And I'm not in a hurry to get to know you. Our friendship, if one will be formed, it can wait. I'm not in a critical situation where your friendship is going to make a difference in my life. And they might say, but it can open up this door, but it's going to cost me something 
if I align myself with you. So guess what? I am willing to wait. The scripture says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. Teach me, Lord, to wait. Guard your heart by saying no to the request for access to your heart. It is the central intelligence system. This is what, my God, you use, my God, to position yourself for greatness. This is where God makes the deposit. And if my bank was serious enough about, my God, the data breach or somebody gaining access to my account and shut everything down, how much more should I be, my God, ah, quick, to shut down the request of information or persons who is trying to gain access to me. How much more? An ally. It's the person who defends you even when you're not there. God is an ally for us. He is. And that is the person who we should be by God. You see, the thing about us, and I'm closing with this, I don't understand why is it that it is important that I just open up my life and share everything with everybody. But as far as having a conversation where I open up and I share with the Lord, why is it that I have reservation? Spirit of the living God, we come before you this morning. And like the children of Israel in Joshua chapter number one. Father, if it is that this is the reality that I have to navigate in that a request came and maybe my God, there is this area of my life where which I don't feel love, I don't feel cared for. I don't feel a lot of the things that I think I should feel. And as a result of that, the invitation comes and the person present themselves to be this. And it gets me happy and excited, not realizing that they have done their research. They know who I am. They know what I'm about. And they know, my God, that I'm positioned to do great things for you. But because of this area, because of this immature area in my life, because of this area in my life, God, that ah, every time, God, ah, 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 I want to get up and I want to stand. This area is never validated. So now they come and they begin to validate this area in my life. And it caused me to feel good about myself. And as a result of that, God, ah, I want to open up and I want to just share everything. I pray this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. That as we fast and pray, and as you reveal to us, my God, these areas of concern, these areas that were never validated, my God, as a child, my God, and to the experienced exploiter, God, they can see the telltale sign, my God, these nonverbal communications and cue that we give off, my God, in that ah, I, I, I need to be validated in this, and individuals see that God, and they begin to plan, and they begin to execute, my God, a plan to come and to join themselves, my God, to harvest, and to take, and to steal, and to destroy, and to tear us up. Pray this morning, God, for every plan that have been set in motion to destroy, my God, your children, every alliance, my God, that ah, have been executed, my God, and there is a waiting period. I thank you this morning, Jesus, that there is a waiting period before a contract should be signed this morning, divine revelation interrupt the plan just like how you interrupted my God the wise man who Herod sent to go find the Christ child and bring information back your word declare unto us in the book of Matthew that you met them and you said to them go a different way don't go the way that you came I pray this morning that divine revelation accost us meet us where we are on our way to go signing a contract and a covenant that is going to be Detrimental to our demise. Up, mashe koto shanda yaba. Kila bande bebebe yo sete de 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 bosha. Tiyala ba yana ma kuto do 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 de bosha. Ela ba si keto shanda. Ida ba keto. Eba ba si bebebe endolo bosha. 
Ah, ya na 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 mando lo bo shete de 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 bo kusata. Ah, Jesus. Jesus. Ah, I feel your peace, oh God, descending upon us. This is the peace that passes it all understanding. Ah, God, I thank you. And this is the peace that will guard our heart. God, let the peace that we feel in this moment because of the anxiety that we felt about going, let this peace now becomes our North Star. And that God, whenever opportunity presents itself before us, and if we don't feel your peace or have your peace about it, my God, we're going to make a defiant stand like Moses. And that he said, God, if your presence does not go before me, God, I am not going. Thank you, Lord God, for insight into what you want to talk to us about. Guard your heart with my peace. Guard your heart with my peace. So if I don't have peace about a particular thing, God, this is your way of saying, no, don't go, stop, turn, go a different way. God, I pray that this peace, this is the peace which passes it all understanding. I pray this morning, God, that it will rest, remain, and abide with us all. And let the peace of Almighty God, my God, rule your heart. Let the peace of Almighty God Ah, confirm what we need to do. Let your peace, as the songwriter rightfully said, O oh God, when peace, like a river, attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, God, you have taught me to say, it is well with my soul. We thank you for your peace. Ah, you met your disciple. You said, my peace I give unto you, not as this world gives. We thank you, O oh God, that I've been fasting and praying. My God, and our spirit is now open to receive. God, that you will deposit your peace in us. So we're not, my God, anxious to make any quick decision. God, we thank you for this deposit that is raining down upon us, your people. Now, Father, we open up our minds and our hearts and we say, God, I receive your peace. I receive your peace, O oh God. I receive your peace. God, I receive your peace. I receive your peace. God, when I'm tempted and I'm tested to react and to act in a way that is uncharacteristic of me, God, it is your peace that will uh, say to me, Ian, don't do that. And because I know have your peace, which is a guide, God, I can go and do and become anything you have called me to do and to become. Spirit of the living God, let us not be anxious about doing anything. But in all ways, help us to acknowledge you. And by us acknowledging you, oh God, you will guide our heart and you would lead us. In fact, God, my prayer for everyone is that unless your peace go before us, let us become people who are taking the stance to say, if God's peace does not go before me, and if God's peace is not in the middle of anything that I attempt or I wanted to do, I'm not going to do it. And by us taking this type of stance, when the request of the acquaintance come and the request of the associate to form alliance and covenant with us, God, you will give us peace about who, my God, get prominent positions in our lives. Let your peace, my God, be that which set in motion anyone or anything that we join ourselves to. And if your peace is not there, God, we are going to deny the request. Spirit of the living God, we come before you this morning. And we just thank you for the deposit of peace that you have just downloaded, my God, in this moment. My prayer is that everyone who would listen and hear this, the same deposits will be made. My God, this moment, my God, will transcend time 
in that every time this sermon is listened to, God, that peace will be downloaded in everybody's circumstance and situation. We look to you this morning, God, and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Guard your heart and be very selective with the access that you grant. These men came to the children of Israel and they present themselves to be something that they're not. Israel form an alliance with an enemy that God should have wiped out. And I want you to understand how powerful a covenant is. Because of the covenant that they form, God could not purge this thing from the country. It had an extended life because they chose not to inquire of the Lord. Guard your heart. Be careful of the access that you grant and who you give access to. I'm grateful for my bank for what they did. And we should take this as a life lesson. We should take this as a life lesson that whenever the parameter, the security is breached, we need to shut everything down. Everybody is treated as a suspect until proven differently. I love you with the love of the Lord. I preach hard because I want you to have this and not live below the mark and let excuse determine what comes next from you. God love you, and I do. We don't close service, we know that, but we're going to pray music, and my prayer is that your heart will continue to be in tune as you listen, and whatever needs to be worked out, we work it out in the presence of the Lord and with the word of the Lord. God bless you, and thank you.